Hello, I'm Jeff Cavins, and today we're looking at the readings for the Feast of the Holy Family. When we talk about families in America today, a lot of people have opinions on what a family is. But there is an ideal family, a perfect family, and that was the Holy Family. It was Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. And in today's reading in the Gospel of Luke, we see all of them converging on Jerusalem as they did three times a year when they made pilgrimage to Jerusalem. But I want to set your attention on something that's just a little bit different in a reading, and that is the natural growth of Jesus. And uh, the second thing I want to focus on is I want to focus on the Blessed Virgin Mary and her ability to keep things in her heart. It's a beautiful reading. It starts in Luke chapter 2 and verse 41. Now his parents, it says, went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Pause there for a moment before verse 46. Three times a year, families would make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And oftentimes on the way to Jerusalem, they would entertain themselves by traveling in a caravan, cousins walking with each other. And as they made their ascent to Jerusalem, they would sing what are called the Psalms of Ascent. These are Psalms that declare the wonder of God and how Jerusalem is so spectacular, kind of like watching a movie in your minivan on a vacation it might be. When they made their pilgrimage, they would oftentimes be in a caravan and parents would assume that they are with uncles and aunts and cousins. And in this case, they lost track of Jesus. And it says in verse 46, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. I wanna pause there again too, after verse 46. When you understand that Jesus was fully human and that he was also fully divine, we call that the hypostatic union. It's a mystery. You're not going to get your mind around it completely. We receive it by faith. But he grew completely as a human. As a boy, he grew in wisdom and stature, which is the way we end this reading this week. He grew in his understanding and he learned at the feet of his teachers and primarily his mother is where he learned to pray. And there was an interesting uh, way of learning during Jesus' day. The young boys would go through three phases of their education. From the age of seven to ten, they would go through what's called the Beit Sefer, the house of the book. And then from ten to fourteen, they would go through the Beit Talmud, where they would learn the traditions and go deeper into the Word of God. But they also had a unique form of teaching where the teacher would teach them and then test them by asking them questions. Like in math, they may say, what's two plus two? But no student is going to answer four because that is going to be too obvious. The students would answer the teachers by asking a question. So if the teacher said, what's two plus two? The, the student would respond, teacher, what is the square root of 16? Which shows I know the answer, but I can think from different angles. We see Jesus engaged in this type of teaching here at the temple. When they found him, what was he doing? When they found him, he was teaching and asking questions, thoroughly involved in the process of learning during his day. Now I'm saying this to you because I think sometimes we, we use Jesus as the Son of God as an excuse for our own lack of understanding or really studying hard. Yes, Jesus was the second person of the Trinity, but he was also the son of Mary, the son of Joseph. And he learned and he set his heart on understanding as he learned the scriptures. And that's, that's a challenge for us today, is that we need to do the same thing Jesus did. We need to grow in wisdom, grow in our understanding, and we only do that by studying. And so I want to encourage you in this, this great reading of the Feast of the Holy Family. In your family, pursue the Word of God. In your family, teach your children the Word of God. 
I'm reminded of, of the great adventure storybook for children, which you can get, that will help you to bring your children through salvation history and at the same time learn how everything Catholic, the creed, the words of mass, the mysteries of the rosary, all of these wonderful, wonderful covenants that we celebrate, all of them spring from the story of salvation history. And so as we turn our attention to the Holy Family, I encourage you and your family to grow in wisdom and to grow in stature. And then of course, we find at the, near the end of the reading that uh, his mother kept all these things in her heart. What a wonderful internal commentary she must have kept as she watched Jesus grow in wisdom and stature. Another note for parents is to keep the growth of your child and the things your children are doing in your heart as a subject of prayer, and you can pray over them. So this week, let's imitate the Holy Family.